Out of Geraldton, growers gather to tackle a familiar problem in the east, but a relatively new pest for the west, mouse infestations. This is your measure, you know, if you're walking 100 metres and you've got one of those every 100 metres, 100 burrows a hectare. Mouse plagues have wrought havoc in many Australian agricultural regions, but in WA's grain growing region, farmers are just beginning to report increasing mouse activity, sparking new concern about risks heading into seeding. In response, GIDC has facilitated regionally specific workshops with CSIRO researchers Dr Wendy Rusko and Steve Henry, offering strategies to improve mouse control and avoid expensive crop losses. The workshops are aimed at, at making farmers aware about what the key considerations are in the lead up to sowing this crop, um, understanding how many mice they've got, um, what the issues are associated with those mice and being prepared to deal with the mice as they sow the crop in, in the form of baiting. In the lab, CSIRO research focuses on mouse biology, ecology and bait efficacy. On the ground, foot patrols across paddocks are an integral approach to determine the prevalence of burrows and understanding that a few mouse holes can mean imminent infestation. Not unreasonable to assume there's two mice per burrow, then you've got 200 mice per hectare, again not a big problem. If 100 of those mice are having 6 to 10 babies every 19 to 21 days with no breaks in production, from the time you've got 200 mice per hectare to the time you've got a big problem is only 6 weeks. Big crops can mask mouse activity and conservation tillage can lead to year-round favourable conditions. Crop management practices, including managing ground feed and stubble and baiting at sowing time, can help to avoid the nasty surprise of a large and established mouse problem. But what we found was that mice were depleting the grain from other parts of the paddock before they hit the chaff lines because they actually had to dig through the chaff lines to find the grain in amongst it. And again, it's all about how can I get safe as easily as I possibly can, get the food that I need as quickly as I possibly can. Mice can do damage at all phases of the crop and so if they're taking whole plants out when the crop's being sown, then later on when you're actually harvesting the crop there are those big patches that mice have taken out that lead to, to loss of yield. The extent of the problem and its potential is surprising to some growers, some of whom have never baited. But the workshops encourage a proactive whole-of-area approach to mouse management to also help support individual properties manage infestations. We haven't baited on this farm before, we have on the other farm. Uh, it'll be minimal, minimalising the food up front, uh, whether some of it might be burnt, but yeah, a bit of cultivation. And yeah, behind the canola and lupin seeding, we'll be definitely baiting. It is a matter of getting out of the vehicle, going for a walk, understanding the magnitude of the problem, and then starting to talk. If you, if you think you have got a significant problem, starting to talk to the bait suppliers so that you can get the bait on hand that you need in a timely manner to be able to reduce the number of mice as you sow the crop. So baiting off the, off the back of the cedar is one of the things that farmers back over east do really, really well. They're really switched onto it as a really efficient way of dealing with mice. But as I talk to more and more farmers, they can see the logic of, well, it's only one pass while I'm sowing the crop, I'm treating my mice. The advice, know the signs, actively look for mouse activity in active burrows, apply an all-year strategy of baiting and crop management, and always walk those paddocks. Well, number one, you've got to monitor. Number two, do your baiting once your food loads down, and then start monitoring again afterwards. You've got to get out there and inspect it. That seems to be a, a real take-home message. 